I'll leave the house to my parents if you disagree with us getting a divorce. What's this guy talking about? I'm really sad after losing my mother. And then Jack comes up with a smirk and drops this bomb. Suddenly, I don't feel any love for him anymore. Instead, I feel really angry at Jack and my in-laws. Okay, but you'll be sorry, I say. Jack hands me the divorce papers with a stupid grin, not taking me seriously. If he wants it this way, I'm ready to show him I mean business. With a mean grin, I take the papers and leave for my uncle's place. The next day with my uncle, I go to the big house where my in-laws live. Why weren't you here yesterday? You can't just leave when you're supposed to take care of the house, they say. Housekeeper, who are you talking about? I ask. You, the wife. I already got a divorce, I tell them. Jack is shocked into silence. My uncle, who's a lawyer, steps forward. There's something I need to discuss with you, he says. Then I explain about myself. I'm Mariah Carey, a 41-year-old housewife who works. I don't have a dad. He died when I was little. My mom raised me all on her own. She was a great businesswoman and built a big company from nothing, all to make sure we never struggled with money. She always wanted me to be happy and live a good life for both her and my dad. Thanks to her, we never had to worry about money. Hey, Mariah, big sis. I was nearby for work and thought I'd stop by. Tough working even on your day off, huh? Yeah, it's just how it goes. Oh, by the way, where's that heavy package you mentioned? I can help you with it while I'm here. My uncle, your brother, could pitch in two when he had time, so we never really struggled. But in our house, the rule was always to handle your own stuff. Mom, can I get a part-time job? There's something I want to buy. Sure, I don't mind. What do you want to buy? A book for a certification I want to get in the future. Oh, Mariah, you're such a good girl. I never shied away from putting in the effort, and my mom always praised me for it. Now, I have a managerial job at my company. I fell for you at first sight, Mariah. Watching you never stop trying just made me fall for you even more. I met my husband, Jack, at work. He approached me enthusiastically, and I eventually fell for his spirit, leading us to get married. We don't have any kids, but we live a normal life together. One day, I had to work late because of a long meeting. I'm finally home. I'm starving. Hurry up and get the food ready. When I got home, Jack was just lounging on the sofa, playing with his phone, not even greeting me. I couldn't help but feel annoyed. I told you I'd be home late today, so go ahead and eat first. Did you? I definitely told you, and you even said you understood. Whatever, just hurry up and get the food ready. Jack doesn't hold any position at work, he's what you'd call a long-term employee. I always tell him I want him to do more housework because of this, but he never lifts a finger. He leaves his clothes on the floor and doesn't even clear away his plates after eating. When we first got married, he used to care about me and help with the chores. You know, I've just come back from work and I'm tired. You, on the other hand, have the luxury of lying on the sofa so at least get your own food ready. Stop nagging as if you could have kids. At those words, I snapped. It's true we don't have children, but it's not entirely my fault. Both of us have bodies that make it hard to have kids. It's the same for him. It's your fault we can't have kids because your body is defective, he says, blaming it all on me. Perhaps his pride is hurt because I have a job and he's not progressing in his career. In other words, he's just jealous and taking it out on me. That has nothing to do with this. If I'm defective for working and doing house chores, what does that make you who does neither? What did you say? Are you mocking me? That day, we ended up arguing and feeling sulky. Jack went to bed, without eating anything. I was left holding my head, unable to understand his actions. I've worked so hard. I muttered to myself while warming up some pre-made dishes. The next morning, it was a rare day off with nothing to do, so I got up later than usual. Jack's not here, huh? He's usually sleeping till noon. He's probably gone to his parents' house for something. Thinking that, I got ready and headed to the hospital. Mom, I'm here. 
Oh, Mariah, are you off today? Yeah, how are you feeling? Same as always. My mother had collapsed at work the other day and is currently in the hospital. Knowing her, she probably felt unwell before she collapsed but ignored it and continued working until her body couldn't take it anymore. Even now, she must be feeling unwell, but she's working from her hospital bed. What about you? How are you doing? I'm fine, really, I replied with a smile to my worried-looking mother. I can't give her any more to worry about, you know. The row of trees in front of the office was beautiful again this year. Want to see the pictures I took? Yeah, I'd like to see them. With that thought, I changed the subject. Then I had a pleasant chat with my mom and left the hospital after a while. Oh, it's from my mother-in-law. I noticed a message on my phone. Honestly. I didn't feel like calling her back, but then she started calling me. Reluctantly, I answered. Where the heck have you been? I was visiting my mom at the hospital. What? You left Jack alone to prioritize your own parent? Her shouting over the phone made me grin. As expected, Jack seemed to be at his parents' house. His mother was complaining about it. You're always putting so much on Jack. A wife should prioritize her husband. Just because you have a job doesn't mean you can get cocky. And you can't even have children. I wish she'd let her grown son live his own life. Jack always hides behind his parents. It's really pitiful. With those thoughts, I brushed her off and hung up. What's wrong, Mariah? You look upset. Oh, hi, uncle. Are you here to visit mom too? Something like that. Then, from somewhere, my uncle called out to me. There was a man standing behind him. Is he your colleague? Yeah, he might be related to your work in the future. Let me introduce you, Frank Sinatra. Nice to meet you. He handed me his business card, and I gave him mine in return. Afterwards, my uncle told Frank to go ahead into the hospital because he had something to discuss with me. So who was on the phone? Yeah, my mother-in-law. I explained the situation with a wry smile. Jack, who doesn't do house chores and runs to his parents' house whenever we have an argument. His mother, who defends him and insults me for being infertile. After hearing my story, my uncle looked troubled. I'd rather you didn't tell mom about this. I don't want her to worry anymore. All right, my uncle nodded, looking concerned. I thanked him, and we parted ways. Not long after, something happened. Wait, mom is. By the time I rushed back to the hospital, my mother had passed away, stunned by the sudden farewell. I just couldn't keep up, and I was left in a daze, unable to think of anything. My uncle took charge and handled the funeral arrangements firmly. All right, with this, the inheritance is all ours. Really? She was the CEO of a big company, wasn't she? I wonder how much money is in the inheritance. The wife's inheritance belongs to the husband's family after all. We can finally say goodbye to that shabby house. What snapped me back to reality was such an insensitive conversation. Jack and his parents were laughing during the funeral. Unable to believe their remarks, I froze, but my uncle kicked them out. Jack and his family tried to resist, but realizing people were glaring at them, they left, hurling insults at my uncle. Maria, if you ever want to cut ties with them, just let me know. Yeah, thank you. After that incident, I didn't want to go back to the house where Jack was. So I decided to temporarily live in the mansion, which was part of my mother's inheritance. This house was meticulously designed by my mother, filled with numerous memories. I planted flowers in the garden to soothe my busy mother, and we played hide-and-seek in this vast mansion on holidays. Even though she should have been busy with work, my mother always made time for me. Spending time in this mansion brings back those days. If I'm gone, you can do whatever you want with this house, my mother had said to me when she was alive. And now, I'm thinking maybe I should just. Just as I was pondering this, the doorbell rang. Maybe my uncle came to check on me worried, since he used to drop by unannounced when I was a kid, saying he was in the neighborhood for work. I opened the front door without thinking. I knew you'd be here, Jack, and wow, what a fabulous house. Hey, wait a minute. There stood Jack and his parents. 
surprised by the unexpected visitors, they barged into the mansion. Moreover, they brought moving boxes with them, one after another. What are you doing in my mother's house? Your mother is gone, isn't she? This is my house now. No, you're wrong. This house is in my parents' name. My mind went blank at those words, my parents, but it's my mother's inheritance. Why would it belong to Jack's parents? Got a legal assistant friend to change the ownership for us. What? How dare you do such a thing without asking? Shut it. A wife's belongings belong to the husband's family. But hey, relax, we'll keep you as our maid, Jack said with a grin. The house will be given to my parents. If you oppose this, we're getting a divorce. What on earth is he talking about? Jack spoke with a smile while I'm drowning in sorrow from losing my only mother. At that moment, I realized my love for him had vanished. In its place, anger towards Jack and his parents welled up inside me. Fine, but you'll regret it. Shut up, you idiot, I said, not taking my words seriously. He handed me a pre-filled divorce form, smirking. If he's serious, I'll show them I'm serious too. I'll make him regret looking down on me. Grinning, I took the divorce papers and left the house. My destination? My uncle's place. What the they've really crossed the line this time? I immediately consulted my uncle, who is a lawyer. Changing ownership without consent is illegal and normally impossible. Yet they had a legal assistant do such a thing. Don't worry, I'll protect my sister's house, and of course, I'll protect you, Mariah, my uncle assured me with those words, and we immediately set out to take action. The sadness of losing my mother had completely turned into anger towards those outrageous people. I won't forgive that unreasonable family. The next day, I went to the mansion occupied by Jack's family with my uncle. Where were you yesterday? A maid can't just leave on her own accord. Maid, who are you talking about? Who else? You, the wife. We're divorced, though. Jack froze at my words. Taking that as a cue, my uncle began to speak. I have something to discuss as a lawyer regarding this matter. He looked at Jack coldly. By the way, I immediately filled out my part of the divorce papers handed to me yesterday and submitted them, including that. As I reported, Jack seemed to be in a daze, probably not understanding the situation. Hey, what's all this ruckus? Just then, my in-laws popped in, probably having caught wind of the disturbance. That's when my uncle stepped in and clarified that I am the rightful owner of this house, stating firmly that any unauthorized changes to the ownership would be downright illegal. What are you talking about? We've got a legal clerk handling all the necessary paperwork. And just who might that be? You do realize this is a clear-cut case of forgery, right? Leaving my in-laws to my uncle, I turned my full attention to Jack, who was glaring at me, realization dawning in his eyes. Don't you dare pull any unilateral moves, oh really? And who was it that decided to go off and do things on their own first? I haven't done anything illegal, at least. Jack was left speechless by my retort. It's almost laughable how easily he was silenced. I guess that explains why he's never made it far in life. You're infertile, and yet you always bring that up so quickly. But to be quite frank, you're not in a position to talk. Yes, I do have difficulties getting pregnant. However, there is still a chance for me if I seek treatment. Jack, on the other hand, has been told outright that having children is out of the question for him, even with medical intervention. I might still have a shot at having kids. You, however, are completely out of luck when it comes to holding your own child. That's just, I'll never forgive you for belittling the cherished memories I have with my mother. Jack bowed his head in defeat, and it seemed like my uncle had successfully shut my in-laws up. Pack your things and leave here immediately and be prepared for what's coming next. Under our icy glares, their faces turned pale. They will regret crashing the house filled with memories of my mother and me, a house they dared enter with their shoes on. My sister had realized that you were going through a hard time. It turns out my mother had noticed something was amiss and had asked my uncle to look out for me. 
Expecting that I wouldn't want to bother her with my troubles, she knew I'd keep quiet to avoid causing her stress. So she asked you to help me instead. That's what I heard from my uncle. Further investigation revealed that Jack and his family had been bragging about their plans to trick me out of my inheritance the moment my mother passed away. To prevent this, my mother had drawn up a will, entrusting everything to me. She had left the will with Frank, a friend introduced by my uncle. Right here, it states that all of her estate is to be left to her daughter, Maria, and she made it clear that I can do as I please with this mansion. It was clearly written in the will that had been entrusted to Frank. Jack's face turned pale as he heard this, and he started to cling to me desperately. Please, Mariah, I'm begging you. I've already sold our house, and my parents' house is gone too. What? Why on earth would you do something like that without thinking it through? It actually came out that Jack had racked up a significant amount of debt behind my back, and all of it was from spending lavishly at nightclubs. He had taken advantage of my busy schedule to frequent these clubs, throwing money at the hostesses night after night. To pay off his debts, he had sold off both our house and his parents' house. Well, that's your problem, not mine, Jack. But you're my wife, aren't you? I was your wife. Now you've got two choices, either face the consequences of forgery or buy back the mansion for five million dollars. There's no way I can. Selling the houses had just barely allowed Jack to settle his debts. There was no way he could come up with five million dollars. His parents were in the same boat. Watching him squirm, I decided to file a police report. And as I kicked the in-laws out and took stock of the mansion, I noticed several things missing. Some of my keepsakes are gone. What's the meaning of this? That wasn't me. My mom said she wanted to sell the stuff she didn't like. So it turned out my in-laws had taken the liberty of selling things themselves. Looks like I've got more reasons to sue them. In the end, Jack and his family were left with a huge amount of debt, and I made sure he was kicked out of the company properly. After all, I'm the president now, taking over from my mother. Bring me that idiot wife. In such a situation, the father-in-law stormed into the company. He then went on a rampage demanding that the damage report be withdrawn and money be handed over. This led to the police taking care of him as well. What a hopeless parent and child, my uncle and I would say with a bitter smile. So, it seems we figured out who that notorious legal clerk really is. Turns out, that legal clerk was apparently a cousin of Jack's. He manipulated the situation to make me look like a villain grabbed a hold of my weaknesses to force me into cooperating. Because of this incident, this cousin has been cut off from his path as a legal clerk, holds a grudge against our in-laws, and has been spreading rumors in the family, saying I was deceived. They are demons, leading to our in-laws' isolation. So I've heard, it's quite a mess now. Man, that family on the other side seems like they've got some crazy blood running through them. Seems like it. Well, they can just drag each other down for all I care. I have no sympathy for them whatsoever. So that's what I thought. So have you decided what to do with that mansion? Yeah, I've decided to sell it. Indeed, that mansion is filled with memories of my mother. However, it's been tarnished by my in-laws. Plus, that mansion is too big for one person to live in. If Maria has decided that, then do as you please. I'm on your side my uncle said, showing his support for my decision. And so I sold the mansion. Luckily, a wealthy individual looking to spend their remaining years in peace quickly bought it. I said my goodbyes to the memories with my mother and left the mansion behind. From now on, I'll be living alone in an apartment closer to my workplace. Maria, oh Frank, I heard from the senior, and I came here. I was approached by Frank Wright after leaving the office. I owed a lot to him for investigating Jack's family and helping me gather evidence. Would you have some time to spare for me? Sure, I don't mind. And with that, we entered a cafe near the office. Thank you for everything, including what you did about my mother. No, I just wanted to be there for you, Mariah, saying that Frank looked at me earnestly. 
Surprised, I still looked back at him. I like you, Maria. I know things just settled with Jack, and you might not feel the same way right now. But please think about it when things have calmed down. Saying that, Frank gave me his personal contact information. Honestly, I had noticed his actions, but until now, I wasn't able to see him in that way. I'm serious about this, he said, his face turning bright red. At this moment, I found him endearing. Maybe it wouldn't be so bad to get married again, I thought to myself. Sometime later, my in-laws apparently tried to take back the mansion by breaking into it. Perhaps they thought I was still there. However, it was already owned by the wealthy family, thanks to the various security measures they had in place. Jack and his family were quickly dealt with by the authorities. With their previous criminal record, they were handed a prison sentence. Please, Maria, help me. I had forgotten to block his number. And just like that, I got a message from Jack. What an idiot. It seems like the in-laws were the only ones who broke in, and Jack managed to avoid trouble by asking around for help. However, he still has debts too heavy for one person to bear. Can't you learn your lesson already? There's no way I'm going to help you. But we were married once, weren't we? Really, I'm just disappointed in myself for not having enough discernment when it comes to you. I've realized I shouldn't be swayed by you. I need to be more careful from now on. Well, I don't think I need to worry about that anymore. Is that all you wanted to talk about, Mariah? Give me another chance to, I'm going to have to pass. Goodbye. With that, I hung up the phone. This time, I made sure to block his number properly. Is the call over? Yes, it's over now. I decided to start dating Frank. We are now engaged. My uncle encouraged me, saying, This guy is all about sincerity, Frank. I have a hard time getting pregnant, and I'm not young anymore. All I need is you. Besides, family isn't just about blood ties. I genuinely felt that I could build a happy family with him. Then, I talked to my uncle about Jack, Frank, and having children. That's great. If that's what you both have decided, then I'm happy for you. You, I've always wondered, why do you support me so much, uncle? Well, it's a promise I made to your father. According to my uncle, he and my father were best friends. He told me that my father always used to say, If anything ever happens to me, please take care of my wife and Mariah, and to be on your side. I see, besides, you're like a daughter to me, he said with a smile, and I smiled back. I was really glad that he was on my side. Be happy. Yes, of course. I made a firm promise to my uncle that I would be happy. This time, I can't make him worry about me anymore. After that, I married Frank. We enjoyed our life together for a while before deciding to adopt a child. This kid is my grandchild. My uncle also cherished the child. I poured as much love into the child as my mother had into me. Because it's our child, we'll be fine, no matter what. Yes, we will. There may be many trials awaiting us in the future, but I believe we can overcome them. I decided to teach the lessons my mother taught me to my child, to be an ally like my uncle, and to convey honest feelings like Frank. That was my vow. 